Hello, I'm Reema Chandra and welcome to Cooking Without Boundaries. Cooking Without Boundaries to me means breaking out of many boundaries, whether it's cuisine, culture or simple ones like recipes, ingredients and skills. Creating conversations, sharing and nurturing my passion and hoping to inspire you is what Cooking Without Boundaries means to me. Hello, I'm Reema Chandra and welcome to this episode of Cooking Without Boundaries. As I was preparing for the show today, um, I thought, you know, some preparation needs to go in. It cannot be so instantaneous that I uh, don't have the chopped vegetables, etc. So as I was doing that, um, there was a change of plan. And I'm sure you all go through change of plans in your everyday life and then you have to improvise. So I said, well, what do I do now? And I realized I had a bunch of vegetables in a small quantities in my refrigerator. Uh, so little that by itself, it will, not, it will not be enough for my family. But if I combine them together, it will make a wholesome, hearty, healthy, tasty meal. So the idea of stir fry came to my mind and today we are going to cook stir fry style and make three stir fried dishes. I'm sure you have had stir fried vegetables, meat, rice, noodles, pasta, many of these stir fried dishes before and you probably have seen it being made and it's made in a round bottom, wide bowl like vessel on high heat. It's a quick cooking method. It is a um, constant stirring method. So um, for that we need uh, a pot which is a uh, wide mouth pot. But let me tell you how it all started. Um, it is believed that it all originated in China. And in those ancient times um, they didn't have a well-developed stove. So the stove was a makeshift kind of arrangement where they had wood burning in the center and bricks all around it. So they needed a pot that could sit on, the, on those bricks, uh, basically um, on that, you know, heat coming out of that hole. Um, so that's why they needed a round bottom. Then they needed a wide bowl-like structure so that they can quickly stir without um, feeling restricted and also scoop the sides um, on that high flame. Now the wood was burning, the flame was high, you couldn't control the temperature or the flame, so you had to efficiently use that high heat to cook. And so that's how the flash cooking method came about and that's how the existence of wok came about, that wide mouth round bottom vessel is known as wok. Um, if you don't have it, absolutely fine. You, we can all come out of that boundary also and use a pot that conducts heat well because you need the pot to be very hot while cooking the vegetables or the meat or anything stir frying in it. Um, you must keep in mind that temperature should be high, um, there should be constant stirring and the vessel or the pot should be big enough. So the three dishes that we are going to make today, first one is sprouts and squash stir fry. Second one is seared salmon stir fry with brown rice and the third one is pasta and pulled chicken stir fry. So let's get started with this episode of Cooking Without Boundaries by cooking our stir fry dishes. For sprouts and squash stir fry, we um, heat up the wok and then we add two tablespoons of canola oil, coat the pan and we add half one, uh, we will add one teaspoon 
or this is half so we will add one teaspoon of garlic we will do one tablespoon of ginger julienne and stir it quickly flame should be high that's the um, signature of stir-fry style of cooking we add two cups of um, squash cut into thin strips and one cup of um, one and half cup almost of sweet potato and increase the flame stir constantly and let it cook for about 3 to 4 minutes and while it is cooking we are going to um, leave it for a few seconds then stir it again and repeat the process several times until it feels soft enough to add sprouts when we are making the stir fry make sure that you add uh, vegetables that release water quickly uh, later in the pan so that other vegetables like you know squash and sweet potato they don't release water so much they are cooked so here we will be using you will be adding sprouts in the end and also salt you don't want to add salt in the beginning because that will make the vegetables release water so keep those little the few things in mind those are not uh, you know very difficult to remember but if you didn't remember and you added it's okay it's all going to bring the flavor out and taste good anyway so it's been 4 minutes and i've been stirring it um, and i do see that squash and sweet potato they're almost cooked but not yet um, just rightly cooked so i would say leave for another 2 minutes um, spread them well in the pan and then leave them on high for 2 minutes but do stir them uh, every few seconds and um, that should cook it enough just enough uh, for it to stay crisp yet not feel um, raw uncooked So it's been six minutes, and as I'm checking these uh, squash uh, st uh, sticks, um, it depends on how thin or thick they are cut. Some of the thinner ones are already cooked, and some that are slightly thicker, um, they might need another 30 second uh, seconds. But that's okay. Um, you know, we cut it our with our own hands, and and we're not. machines so they can be sometimes of different thickness which is perfectly okay this is our dish um at this point we are going to add uh, sprouts these are this is two cups of sprouts um broccoli sprouts actually and stir we are done with the stir fry add salt and freshly crushed black pepper at this point freshly crushed black pepper quarter teaspoon and salt half a teaspoon that's it it's ready so this is sprouts and squash stir fry for making seared salmon stir fry we will add 2 tablespoons of cooking oil here generally in wok style of cooking i use canola because it's high smoking oil um um olive oil uh, smokes very quickly gets burnt loses its taste so we should avoid olive oil for wok style of cooking because the pan is hot flame is high we need an oil like canola so we added that 
we'll add again two teaspoons of garlic paste just to refresh your memory garlic paste I make it by grinding sliced garlic cloves with little bit of water in a blender and I grind it together and it becomes paste and I store it in refrigerator. I have about one and a half tablespoons of ginger julians here. Add that please and stir. Smells wonderful and you can probably hear the sizzling sound at this point. Add one and a half pounds of uh, thinly sliced salmon fillet, no skin. Make sure your heat or the flame is high and that pan is centered and stir it quickly. Okay, for stir fry style of cooking, um, I like to use uh, fish or seafood, whatever it is that I'm using, any kind of meat, something that cooks quickly. Salmon cooks very quickly and that too if it is thinly sliced, it will cook even quicker. So um, we'll probably take about three to four minutes to cook the salmon here and in the meantime we'll keep stirring it and then we will add other ingredients. At this point, add one cup of thinly sliced onion. And stir. Almost done, um, the salmon is cooked, so almost cooked. So we are going to add other ingredients at this point. Let's do that. Um, quarter teaspoon of freshly crushed black pepper. For this one, we are going to add half a tablespoon of ketchup and mix it, stir it rather. And then add two cups of brown rice. Remember we had one and a half pounds of thinly sliced salmon. That is quite a bit of salmon. So we do want to give it enough of uh, rice so that the entire family can have a good hearty meal out of it. At this point, add salt. I would say this much, about a teaspoon. And this is, I'm using a quarter teaspoon, so four times. Things are getting mixed together. Now with the wok style of uh, the benefit is that you can keep a scooping food from the side, uh, sloping sides, and that's, that's very helpful in a wok style of uh, pot. And at this point, we add two cups of finely shredded uh, Napa cabbage. And now give it a good stir. It's been about seven minutes and our seared salmon stir fry is ready to be served. Pasta and pulled chicken stir fry. We start with adding oil to the wok and we have two tablespoons of oil. Um, coat the pan. And this is again going to look like because it is a stir fry dish and we are making use of all the some of 
ingredients that I'm going to add in this is actually leftover. Pulled chicken is a leftover from a roasted chicken before. So um, the quantity will uh, look like a lot, which is okay because you are going to feed your family with this one dish and then there is a little bit left over you can use it for your lunch or etc so add four sliced cloves of garlic and i have ginger julians left over from other dishes and I believe this is about two and a half tablespoons. I'm going to add it all. Not keep anything, don't want to waste. And add two cups of um, diced chopped uh, eggplant. Make sure your heat is high and you're stirring it constantly. Plants take a few minutes to cook, so let's leave it uh, to cook for good two to four minutes. But also, we will be stirring it in between. I'm ready to add other ingredients now because it's been about three to four minutes uh, with eggplants cooking in the wok. So let's add one cup of thinly sliced Spanish onions and mix it. Two cups of thinly sliced peppers. I had half a red pepper and one full green pepper so that's what I did. I used up the half cut red pepper also. That's the idea behind stir fry that you use up any little small quantity that you have left over from uh, previous cooking and let it all cook together for another two minutes and then we will add more ingredients to it. Things look very good here. Vegetables are getting cooked and sauteed and um, flavorful at once. We don't want to overcook vegetables, so let's add our next ingredient, tomatoes. These are diced tomatoes. Now, this is going to release water, so we have to be very quick. Uh, one teaspoon of salt and quarter teaspoon of freshly crushed black pepper. Mix it. Looks beautiful. Things spilled over, which is all right. Sometimes that happens. We add chicken, pulled chicken at this point, two cups of pulled chicken. and mix them together. And let it all get sauteed and cooked on high flame together. Chicken is already cooked, so essentially we are refreshing the taste here of chicken here. This is from leftover roasted chicken. Um, we are warming it up and letting it get flavors from other vegetables here. Now we add um, linguine. These are whole wheat linguine and I cooked them um, ahead of time. Well, let's first turn it, try to mix this way, whatever you can. And now I will use the tongs. looks like a lo mein dish but it is not. It's linguine and 
bunch of vegetables together because oftentimes we have pasta left over in our refrigerator. So you can turn all of that into this delicious pasta and pork chicken stir fry. One minute of cooking this and we are done with pasta and pulled chicken stir fry. It will be ready to be served. So we took an ancient style of cooking, stir frying, and we turned some leftovers, some fresh ingredients, uh, some ingredients that you don't generally use in your cooking. We brought all of that in our cooking today. We came out of our boundaries. We made sprouts and squash stir fry. We made seared salmon stir fry with brown rice. And we made pasta and pulled chicken stir fry. We used our vegetables, whatever we had. And we added some fish here, some chicken here, some sprouts here. All of these fresh ingredients Melting in your mouth is what I call cooking without boundaries. Any question, any concern, please write to me at remayatsharantv.com or call me. I would love to hear from you at 617-504-5136. Until next time, happy cooking without boundaries.